Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to another video. It is another video, finally. If you guys knew the stress that I had to go through to film today, especially this video, and this is one of four videos that I'm going to be filming today, you would sympathize with me. It's raining outside, so you might hear a bit of thunder, but I had to stop earlier on. It's like an hour later, and I had to stop earlier on because it was so wild. The thunder was just out of control, okay? It was out of control. So I'm hoping that now it's a little bit lighter. I can't do anything about the thunder, but I'm hoping that it will bear with us so we can record. This is the only time that I have to record. So anyway, welcome everybody thank you so much for being here if you haven't subscribed to the channel please do click the subscription box and also click the notification bell so that you know every single time i upload my name is gatleo from the just gatleo channel and yeah pretty much you know we have a good time here it's a vibe here we have moments we have good times and yeah today is a very very interesting conversation and i think we should just get right into it let's do it so the biggest thing regarding this conversation for me is that it was prompted by what i saw on social media what i've been seeing on social media and not only on social media but with relationships my relationships my friends relationships my friends um marriages and all of that seeing that relationships are failing and i'm trying to understand which more what was going on? Let's talk to each other. Let's all have a congressional. Let's sit. Let's have a roundtable discussion as to what is going on. Why are relationships coming to an end? What is, which one? Which one? Let's talk about it and let's explain it to one another in a way in which will possibly make some kind of sense, right? So um, this was prompted by me seeing a um, sort of like a statement that Mini Lamini released. Uh, of her divorcing from her husband, uh, Quentin. And I was so sad about it because I thought, man, another celebrity couple and how many celebrity couples have divorced or broken up and I'm just wondering, Kanti, which one is this one? So I started thinking about it a lot and I thought to myself, could it be because of social media? Does social media play a role in relationships? And if you're not, if you're easily pressured or you feel like, Ish, I don't know, could you fall into the trap that social media sets for some relationships? Or could it just be other normal things that all of us go through when it comes to interpersonally engaging with another person in a private space, right? So I thought about it for about a day or two after she released her statement and then I put it onto my Instagram and I said, do you think that social media plays a critical role as to, you know, making relationships fail or survive? I mean, I knew my answer to that, but I wanted to see what other people were going to say with regards to that. So then I thought to myself, okay, I'm going to do a real talk video about it. We're going to get into it. But... I knew essentially what I feel about social media <laughs> and relationships and but at the end of the day social media is a man-made construct thing okay we can't now say that social media is the reason why relationships fail or celebrity relationships fail or you shouldn't put your relationship on social media because you feel like maybe you know exposing people to um your relationship online gives them room to scrutinize your relationship or give them gives them some sort of sense of entitlement to want to know what's going on with your relationship whether you're getting married whether you're divorcing now they want some sort of PSA engagement kind of thing where tell us why I mean you brought us into your wedding now you want to bring us into your divorce you don't want to bring us into your divorce and I just I just feel like the world that social media has created for couples and for relationships is quite a difficult one what you choose to share they're blasting in my area what you choose to share on social media about your relationship about your family life about your personal life work life whatever is entirely up to you but i feel like people online seem to scrutinize relationships that are more projected online outward they seem to scrutinize them when they fail or because they feel some sense of entitlement of wanting to know i mean you brought us into your marriage so now bring us into your divorce or you brought us into your relationship so now tell us what happens as if we're going to sit here and discuss our 
personal lives, like it's days of our lives, like you're watching Brook on the Bold and the Beautiful. That's it's it's not it. It's not it. But I feel like it begs to think about the fact that why is it that nowadays so many relationships seem to be failing? And let's not even be let's not even lie, okay? Ever since Omicron Panasonic started from the beginning, 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 we all know that so many relationships have come to an end. Now we can talk about, okay, maybe people were confined, put in a certain space, couldn't move, couldn't breathe, couldn't go to work and be separate from your partner for a while or whatever. You were just constantly on top of each other. And maybe that's why, you know, maybe that's why the relationship came to an end because you just you just couldn't do it. You know, work and spending time away with friends and family away from your partner provided that solace, that break, that breather. And because now Covivi and Covatron and Omegatron and all of that has now put us in a confined space with our partner for prolonged periods of time. Did it maybe awaken things that people didn't realize were there in their relationships? Or is it just maybe you realize then that, you know, we're not really compatible, you know? It's not really that kind of thing between me and this person. So before I get into your responses, what you responded to when I said, do you think social media plays a role? Or what is it? Why do you think relationships are failing? I came up with some pointers. It's in my little trusty boss planner right here, okay? It's in here. I came up with some pointers as to why I feel relationships are failing. And I used my relationships that failed prior, before as an example, and also based on stories that I've heard from my friends, based on things that I've heard from family members as to why their relationships failed, and um, also based on just what I've been seeing, right, online and how people communicate with one another and all of that. Now I have to make a big disclaimer here. This is obviously the psycho the psychological, okay? This is obviously the psychology of human interaction and human interpersonal relationships. I am not qualified to talk too much on this, but I have been on this earth long enough and have been through many here relationships to also give my opinion. So what I say Take it with a pinch, grain, tablespoon of salt, it's up to you. We're just going to discuss and I'm going to give you the pointers that I feel are major contenders as to why relationships seem to fail, including my, my own, including my own and my friends' relationships, why they seem to fail in, you know, today's day and times. So we're going to get into it. One of the biggest things for me that kind of stood out when it comes to why a lot of relationships fail is competition. Now hear me out. This, this is point number one, right? Competition. Hear me out. In relationships of today, there's so much that each partner is doing, right? Corporate work, building themselves, you know, multiple streams of income, the relationships that they have with other people, friendships, family, blah, blah, blah. And I feel like it's an innate quality in human beings to always want to be competitive. Sometimes you don't want to be competitive with, you can be competitive with your siblings. You can be competitive with your family members, with your best friend. You can, so why wouldn't it be an understandable thing to be competitive with your partner? And I feel like in so many relationships, even though it is not spoken about quite a lot, Competition is a huge contender as to why some relationships fail. The one person you compete against one another unknowingly sometimes, unwillingly sometimes, it's just an innate thing that's consistently happening. And then next thing you realize the other partner doesn't feel uh, adequate enough because they're not bringing much to the relationship and then the other one feels that yeah well it doesn't seem like we're compatible anymore when we started out we both did this together and we were pushing and we were ambitious and we were whatever and then at some point during the relationship one of the others kind of stagnated or tried to compete the blasting is wild or tried to compete and realize that you know it's taking a lot on them in terms of their mental health their mental space and all of that and in turn the relationships begins to deteriorate. So I think that competition is a huge thing as to why some relationships deteriorate and it's I don't think it's one that is spoken about quite a bit but I think that competition is huge. I think 
um, competing with your partner is one of the biggest, biggest reasons why some relationships will deteriorate or do deteriorate because it shouldn't be about competition. It should be a partnership where we are both in it as a unit to achieve better for ourselves. We're in it as a unit and we are working to be debt free and we're working to have a family and have a life together. We're not working to me be debt free and you still, you know, you still drowning in debt and all of that. But I feel like people just innately tend to compete with one another and I feel like it happens quite a lot in relationships. Please tell me if you agree and if you don't agree and while you're thinking about it, subscribe to the channel. Thanks so much. Okay, and then one which I think would be linked to social media quite a bit is trying to put a lot of emphasis at making your relationship perfect. You want it to seem perfect outside to the world. You want it to seem perfect to each other. You want it to consistently seem perfect right round so that people can see, ooh, this is the golden couple. This is Jay-Z and Beyonce. Well, we know how that one went. We know that Jay-Z and Beyonce are not perfect, but hey, hey, they're still together. They're pushing, okay? But you know, People work so hard at wanting to come across as a trophy couple that they don't leave enough room for each other for the other to make mistakes. They don't leave enough room with each other for the other one to just be human, right? You're working so hard at making it perfect. You want, you want, you know, if you put it on social media, you want people to see that you guys look great together. You know, you are um, both in corporate, you're making money, you look good, you feel good, you this, this, this. Everything about you and the person that you're with that people are seeing on social media just seems to come across as so perfect. And you try and emulate that and put it into your personal relationship, even behind closed doors, even behind the cameras, even behind the all of that, that the other person tends to feel inadequate. They tend to feel like, bruh, I'm not trying to be going to the restaurant all dressed up and looking cute and everything. No, hi man, why don't you wear a, a better shirt? What, 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 what? Ah, man, we've always gone to this restaurant with me wearing a t-shirt. Now all of a sudden I must wear a shirt and now I must shave and I must, this, this, this. This constant need to try and emulate perfection in relationships and try and project it out onto the world, I feel like is one of the most stressful things you can introduce into a relationship because nobody perfect child. Can I drink some water while you think about that? Nobody is perfect at all. So the whole idea or the whole ideology that, you know what, we want to come across as a trophy couple, the perfect couple, puts so much pressure and strain on the other person that there is no way that the relationship would not deteriorate. Can you imagine being a partner to somebody who's an influencer? Or a partner to somebody who's a celebrity or a partner to somebody who's a something who is well known, right? And the other person, the other half of that partnership is just somebody hmm? It's just somebody that's just working and all of this. Now suddenly they are with the influencer, they're with the whatever. Now the pressure. Every time your partner is like, okay, can we go out this evening? I've been invited to this, this, and this, a gig, and whatever, whatever. I think about that all the time. I've had conversations with my sister and her partner and my partner about things like that all the time. Like, it, I can only imagine the immense stress that they go under knowing that I'm just a normal person who's working my nine to five and here I am, I'm with an Lady M official and now, yo, my goodness, you know, oh, yo, eh, and this person probably find it's just an introvert, somebody who just wants to mind their own business, but now they, you know, you want to support your partner, you want to show up and this and this, and now you have to project this image of perfection for the image of your partner and the image of your relationship. Can you imagine Ooh, the mental strain? I don't know. I don't know, honey. I don't know. I don't know. And then the third point, which I feel like relationships would fail, let's be real, let's be honest about it, sexual compatibility. Now, when I talk about sexual compatibility, we're going to be grown-ups here, okay? We're going to talk about it, okay? Sexual compatibility, I feel, doesn't necessarily always mean sex, 
okay? It doesn't always necessarily mean sex. It just means the intimacy that you share with one another. What is intimacy to you? What is intimacy to your partner? Do you even talk about intimacy? Do you talk about the things you like? that they do in the bedroom? Do you talk about the things you don't like that they do in the bedroom? Are you making compromises? Are you doing things that you normally typically would not do with your partner, right? Just because you feel like you want to keep them or whatever. Are you not satisfied sexually in your relationship? Are you even saying anything about it? Or are you just like, mm, it's fine. Are you, are you just like, mm, it's fine, it's fine. We love each other. It's fine, it's not a big deal. It's not a big deal. Which one is it? You know, like, how are you actually communicating sexual compatibility? Is it even there? Before you get to the stage where you're communicating sexual compatibility, is it even there? Is there that, do you see sex the same way as your partner does? Are you happy? Are you not happy? And I feel like a lot of people make a lot of exceptions and they stick around when they're not happy, even sexually, and they're just not sexually compatible. Because the reality is, sex is important in a relationship. Sex is important in a relationship, baby girl, baby boy, baby them watching this. Sex is important in a relationship. So, shying away from that because you're a devout Christian who doesn't talk about sexual intimacy or you're in an arranged marriage and you just, you, you just, you're afraid to talk about sexual intimacy with your partner because your partner is 20 years your senior or all of that. These things are problem. <laughs> These things are things that make relationships deteriorate slowly but surely. And it's one of those things that, you know, it's, it's, it's quite prevalent but I feel like it's communicated a lot in the younger generation, you know, our peers and younger and all of that, but not so much in the older generation. And I, I, I feel like it's so, so important to have conversations like that. But I also feel like it is a huge reason, reason why some relationships really do fail. And people might use other reasonings for it as to why their relationship failed or whatever. But I feel like it's one of a, a big reason why relationships fail. The next thing I think about is emotional connection or emotional connectivity between the two of you. And one of the things that comes up for me here is communication. Because I feel like communication is a way in which couples connect. Definitely so important. Communication is important in a relationship. We can all sit here and say that communication is important in a relationship. We know this, okay? We're all grown. Ain't no kids up in here. We know that communication is extremely important in a relationship. But the big thing is, what kind of communication are you having in your relationship? It's one thing to say, hey, hon, how's your day going? Hit them up call them, how's your day going, thinking of you, miss you so much, blah, 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 blah. You know, you're thinking about all those things and you say all those things. Um, what do you want me to cook for dinner tonight? Uh, what do you feel like wearing? What are you gonna wear for work tomorrow? Let me press your clothes. Let me do this, this, this. It is communication, that is fine. But it's about the quality of the communication that you have with your partner. What is it that you are talking about? Because now it's one thing to check in on your partner and check in on how your day is, what are we gonna have for supper tonight, are we going out tonight, what, 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 what. But it's another thing to actually really talk to your partner. Talk to them about their dreams, their hopes, their fears, what they're struggling with, mental health struggles. Talk to them about things that actually matter. What can we do as a couple to develop this relationship, to strengthen it so that we can see each other better and as better versions of ourselves for ourselves? What kind of conversations? It's one thing to communicate. We can communicate all day, every day. We're going to communicate about what's on Netflix, chat about what's happening in Ukraine, which is so unfortunate, chat about what's happening in politics, whatever. We can chat about things like that. But these are things you can chat to your friend about. These are things you can chat to your sister about. You can chat to Twitter about. It's fine. But what kind of conversations are you really having with your partner? You want to know what you pillow talk? What kind of conversations are you having when you guys are having the pillow talk? Are you dealing with somebody who is emotionally available to communicate? Ooh, ooh, but are you though? 
Because if somebody is emotionally unavailable, communication is going to be damn hard, trust me. I know what I'm talking about. When I, what, yeah, what is this one? I know it personally. If you're dealing with somebody who's just emotionally checked out, emotionally unavailable, maybe not because of their own doing, but just because of, you know, how they grew up, their history, traumas, what, 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 what. It's going to be hard for you to communicate with that person. Facts. It's going to be hard for you to communicate with them. So are you even dealing with somebody who's emotionally available to be there for the conversation? What kind of conversations are you having? And I feel like that is another big reason as to why a lot of relationships fail. They think they're communicating, but are they really? Are you truly getting to the crux of the true, the truthest communication? Are you? I feel like the next point I want to make is not being completely yourself. One of the other big reasons why I feel like a lot of relationships fail is that you're not entirely yourself. You're trying too hard to impress. You're trying too hard not to disappoint that person. You're trying too hard not to get on that person's wrong side. You're trying too hard to make it seem perfect that you are running yourself to the ground because you're not really truly being yourself. So you're trying so, so hard to be anything and everything other than what you actually truly are. So I feel like a lot of people are just not truly themselves when it comes to a relationship. If you like to go out and party every single weekend, do not connect yourself with somebody who does not like partying every single weekend. You're going to fight. You're not gonna be about it. If you like to drink, do not connect with yourself with somebody who who not only doesn't drink, but has a problem with drinkers, but yet you feel good, you, you love each other, you'll make it work. It will not work. Because there are people who don't have a problem with drinkers and don't drink and don't mind being in a relationship with somebody who drinks. But somebody who's very vocal about the fact that you, nah, I'm a Christian, nah, I don't drink it. Nah, wait, see, people that get drunk, people that get drunk get rowdy, they get snacks, they get whatever, whatever. That time you are a drinker. Every time when you come back from work, you pour yourself, you're like, okay, you pour yourself a glass of, I got a glass of right now. Let me sh Go. Go. And I'm with somebody who we can have a glass of every day. Just a glass. We're not drunkards. We're just having a glass of after a long day. A1. You can't connect yourself with somebody who does not, who's completely against those ideals and that kind of lifestyle and that way of living because you're going to clash. So I feel like a lot of the time, people are just not completely entirely themselves. You don't feel free to communicate your true intentions. You don't feel free to communicate the fact that, honey, listen, I want to <clears throat> I want to turn it up in the bedroom. I want us to try this. I want us to do this. I want us to do this. You're not communicating those things. But you step on the full and average and just take it. When you know in your previous relationship, you were the body. You're not communicating those things. So now you're sitting in a relationship because you feel like, oh, this is the perfect guy. My family would love this guy. Um, he makes six figures. He's what I want. He's this and this and this. So you end up not being yourself for the sake of keeping somebody else around. Must come at the expense of me not being myself. What? Who is Which one is that one? Oh, no, chance. That's why I feel truly, truly that in so many cases, so many people are in relationships where they're not, especially young people, where they're not really truly themselves. You're in it because you want to go You're just happy. You found somebody, le happy, and that's how you want to keep it. You do not want to stay at the water. You don't want, let me tell you, still water deep in the front. Still, that is Africans. Still water, there's still water deep in the ground. The waters can be still here, up here, up top here, but below, it's rumbling. It's a completely different story. So you can sit here and think, oh, this person is perfect, and this and this and this and this and this and this, but maybe that person inside has a fire, has a fire. But because now they gotta keep it like this, they gotta keep it like this for you. Why? Why would you want to be with somebody that you can't be everything, everything, including yourself with? 
Yo, no, I don't understand. And I'm gonna go into your comments where you gave me your two cents about, um, you know, what you think about relationships being put on social media, what your thoughts are on that, and whether they should or shouldn't be, or what's going on with how relationships are not lasting. I found that so, so interesting, but I'm gonna need to find it quickly. So I said, should it be your choice? Why are marriages and relationships that are pushed online seemingly failing? What's happening? Is marriage no longer the construct it used to be? Is monogamy not a thing anymore as these relationships seem to fail a lot of the time due to infidelity as well? I mean, sexual incompatibility, infidelity, you know how it be, right? So a lot of people said, keep your business private, keep it private, okay? Um, another girl said, don't. Society can force subtle expectations. Next thing, it's about them and not us. Exactly. Once you put your stuff on there, I don't have a problem with showcasing it. I'll, I'll give my opinion right now. But I feel like you can showcase it, but just know that you open yourself up to scrutiny. You open up your relationship to scrutiny, comments, unsolicited comments, people feeling entitled to your personal life. You've got the strength and the liver to do that. So be it, yeah. I say personally don't do it in terms of showing it online. I don't like having, oh, I personally don't do it. I don't like everyone uh, having insight into my relationship. It's sacred to me, each to their own. Babe, whether you post it or not, if one of the parties wants to do nonsense, they will. So basically, this is true. Whether you post it or not, if somebody wants to cheat and there's infidelity, they will do it either way. Whether the relationship is sacred or not, I had a relationship where it was sacred and I got cheated on. <laughs> and it happened. It happened. You know what I'm saying? So it be like that sometimes. If somebody wants to cheat, they're going to do it either way. Whether your relationship is public or private. That man. Um, this lady said, and I know her now, I care so much. A person should show whatever they're comfortable sharing. Uh, just create boundaries for yourself. And I feel like I agree in the sense that it's so important to have a conversation and sit down with your partner and talk about how, okay, I, I want to show you. Are you okay with the fact that I want to show you? Are you okay with this? Are you okay with the fact that people might have things to say and might have comments to say? If they're not, consider your partner before considering other people. Okay? Consider your partner before considering. Because those people aren't going to do nothing for you. Nothing. Nothing. I personally think there's nothing wrong with showcasing your person. I agree. Uh, with independence comes options and freedom. We need to redefine marriage as we know it. And for me, this was the most perfect, perfect uh, comment. Because I feel like you can re redefine marriage. You can redefine your relationship. You can create rules, set boundaries, everything that work for your relationship. If you want to add another person, if you want it to be an open relationship, if you want to be only to share this and not this, if you want to do this and not this, you can redefine your relationship or your marriage to suit the both of you. Whoever, listen, whoever's got a problem with it, they can take their problem. But close by, go start they want to down the road here, here by me, they're blasting. They can take it there. They can throw the problem that they have with my relationship. They can throw it into that rock that they're blasting. And then they can blast on top of it because you shouldn't care. You and your partner should redefine your relationship the way you want to redefine it. And I feel like it's perfect. We don't, this comment is perfect. We don't have to um, uh, adhere to societal norms of what a good, true, healthy relationship should look like. We don't have to adhere to that. It's 2022 for crying out loud. Marriages now are not like marriages ka, the times of mom and the papa. Marriages now are very different. Marriages now are vibrant. Marriages now have their own rules. We love it. We love to see it. So you should be able to do all those things and not worry about the fact that, hey, no, but you're supposed to cook for me every day. Ooh. Why? I believe that women are more independent and more vocal about their unhappiness. And that's okay. That's okay because a lot of the time, women have been so shunned into silence. 
We keep quiet about everything. We beg a zella, we keep quiet. Our people cheat on us, we keep quiet. Our people, what? Let me tell you, men don't care. You understand? Men don't care. People who want to hurt you will hurt you. Whether they are men, whether they are women, whether they are gender non-conforming. People who want to hurt you will hurt you. Yeah, understand? So women all our lives, we just, just being born into a patriarchal society, we've always had to keep quiet about how we truly feel about something. And now I feel like this person is right. Women are more vocal to showcase how they feel about something. And I love that for us. I love that for them. Love it for us. Oh. Humiliation, scrutiny, judgment, all while dealing with the breakup itself. This is what I said. Once you put your relationship out there, once you put your relationship out there for people to see and all of that, you need to open yourself up to the fact that your relationship will be judged. Your relationship will be scrutinized. Your relationship will be. So me personally, I feel like I will never give you that access to judge my relationship for what? Yeah, I understand? This is one of the reasons why I don't put it online. I don't talk about it online because I feel like, and in, in no offense whatsoever, I just feel like, why? Why should I give you the access to make decisions or comments about the person that I'm seeing, whether they've got a big nose, whether they've got dreadlocks up to here, and now you want to come and comment about things like that? It's none of your business. You know what I'm saying? It's none of your business. Next thing you see us, and then you see my, 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 my demeanor is a certain way, and you think, ooh, these ones are fighting. Meanwhile, I just, I could be hungry. I could be hungry. Next thing now, people are judging my relationship based on my demeanor. Nah, bro. Nah, bro. And y'all know that I have a resting bitch face. If you watch my reels, you know I have a resting bitch face. I'm just like, all the time. And people think that I'm mad. And I'm not mad. So, no, no, no. Honestly, a lot of people are broken and just post happy pictures for socials. <sighs> Hence, we always get shocked at the breakups. Um, nobody's trying to, to post unhappy pictures on socials. It's social media. It's literally 30 minutes of your day if you're vlogging. It's literally a still image that was taken three weeks ago from your life if you're putting it on Instagram. So no one wants to put up sad. Yes, we can talk about how fights are real and we can talk about mental health. But if I'm going to be posting up a picture on social media of me and my partner, I don't want to fight us going, I want to fight us going, you know what I'm saying? So of course no one is going to post um, bad things, but yeah, I suppose it is true that a lot of people are just really struggling a lot with so many mental health issues and obviously that infiltrates into relationships as well. I think and hope that you guys enjoyed this video and if you have, like the video it's so so important to get each video to over a thousand likes please always remember that when you watch my videos get it over a thousand likes guys if you can get it over a thousand likes i get recommended and it pushes my numbers faster please over a thousand likes and also comment if you've got opinions on this topic i really would love to read them you guys know i respond to your comments chat and also yeah subscribe click the bell and I'll see you in the next video. Take care of yourselves, take care of your relationships, take care of your heart and your mind above everything else. I'll see you in the next video. Mwah.